have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. That could not hold you down. You are the risen King, and you sit out in majesty. You are say, you are the risen King. Everybody lift your hands and lift your voice. Hallelujah. I tell you to lift your voice and declare, You have gone it up for One more time, lift your voice and say, Hallelujah. Oh, we give you praise, oh God, hallelujah, you have won it all Gates are opening right now. Doors are opening in the spirit. Someone's destiny is experiencing a change right now. Emmanuel, 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 your name is God, Emmanuel. Your name is God, Emmanuel, 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 your name is God.
donde está Emmanuel donde está Emmanuel donde está Emmanuel your name is God Emmanuel your name is God Emmanuel your name is God we give you all the glory Your name is God. Lift your hands to heaven, eyes closed everywhere. Just lift your hands to the King of Kings. His presence is mighty in this place. Covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. Alpha Omega. There is no God like you. Robin and keeping love There is no one like you Kabarakatea Alpha Omega Aya There is no one Nibo Zibinigwe Anasi Alleluia Anasi Alleluia Aha Jehovah, Father, we thank you for your mighty presence in this place. We thank you because you will glorify your son Jesus tonight. Jesus, we thank you because you are here. Let the reality of your lordship and your kingship be manifested in this place. By the move of your spirit that will come tonight. And right now, in the name above every other name, I take authority over this place. I come against the spirit of fear. I come against the spirit of anxiety. I speak to the territorial forces over this place. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we command you to bow today. We command the gates over this city to be lifted. We command the gates over this place to be lifted. We command the gates over families and destinies present to be lifted. And let the name of Jesus be glorified. In Jesus' great name we pray. I thought I would hear a better amen. amen. If you are expectant and you know God will do something tonight, make your amen louder. Amen. Now can you give God a big hand of praise? A big, big hand of praise. Amen. God bless you. Just shake hands with someone by your left and your right. Welcome them to this miracle service. And take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. There are hundreds of people here. Hallelujah. I welcome you to June's Miracle Service.
Amen. And I believe that that excitement will not be disappointment today in the name of Jesus. God is going to touch every one of us here present. I'm assured of that. I believe that the presence of God is here. And within a short time when God begins to move, I want to assure you that every burden and every problem you came with tonight will be lifted in the presence of God. The Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And tonight, you will experience that liberty in every area of your life. I said you will experience that liberty in every area of your life. In the name of Jesus. Are you set tonight? John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Once again, I want to, on behalf of the ministry, apologize for the little distortions we have in, we had during the course of the service. Um, I want to assure you that the service will continue to the very end by the grace of God. And we thank God that power has been restored. And I want your hearts to be open for what God will do tonight. John chapter 5 from verse 1. I don't know how long I will preach before God begins to move, but I want you to be open. God will do a quick walk in this place. A very massive walk. And there's a weight of the glory of, the, of God that will rest upon some people here tonight. God assured me that some people will carry a new anointing this night in the name of Jesus Christ. And everything that has been dead in your life will be quickened by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says the flesh profited nothing. It is the spirit that quickens. The word quickens there yeah, means to give life. It means to revive. It means to revitalize. I'm prophesying upon someone again that everything that has been dead in your life before tonight will be quickened by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. John chapter 5 from verse 1. After this there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool which is called in Hebrew Bethesda having five, five porches. In these lay a great multitude. Emphasis on the word multitude. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. And then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had and now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years when jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time he said to him do you want to be made well the sick man answered him sir i have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up but while i'm coming another steps down before me and jesus said to him rise take up your bed and walk and immediately the man was made well took up his bed and walked and that day was the sabbath the lord blessed the reading of his word in jesus name are you ready tonight First of all, this is a very familiar story for those of us who are students of the Bible. This is one amongst the miracles that John, the disciple of Jesus, recorded about Jesus um, in the gospel that he wrote. And at this scenario, the Bible told us that it was in a place called Bethesda. The word Bethesda means house of mercy. House of mercy. 
in Hebrew. Now, it was a place where there was a pool of water, as the story had it, and there were five porches. Uh, a porch is like a little corridor space um, before a building. So the pool was in the center and then there were five porches around the pool. And the Bible says there was a great multitude of people who were sick. In other words, the multitude of people who were gathered at that place were people who were either sick or people who had infirmities, people who had one form of problem or the other, people who were in need of the touch of God. Just the way every one of us that have gathered today are in need of a divine visitation. I hope that is true. Because if you didn't come expecting anything, oh, by the way, remember that we are to submit our prayer points, so make sure at the close of the message, if you have not written down your prayer points, make sure you write it down. We announced that there were going to be two requests, one for yourself and one for your family. All right, particularly if there is someone amongst your family members or your loved ones that you are trusting God for anything whatsoever, please make sure you write it down. When we begin to pray, we are going to collate the request and we are going to call on the God of heaven who will answer by fire. And the name of God will be glorified in Jesus' name. So the Bible says that this multitude of people gathered because they were in need of a touch of God. And the Bible recorded that at a certain time, there was an angel of the Lord who would come and stir up the waters, who would come and trouble the waters. And once that is done, whoever steps into the water first will be healed of any disease whatsoever. That means that that season only guaranteed the healing or the miracle of one person. Now, I want you to realize that the name of this place is called Bethesda. And like I said, Bethesda means house of mercy. The reason is because this activity that was happening at that time was actually an extension of the mercies of God. That God will show them mercy and that once and again, because you know, before the coming of Jesus, miracles and healings were not commonplace. Here and there in the Old Testament, there were a few prophets who performed one or two miracles. But it was not common to see healings and miracles amongst the people. That is the reason why Jesus was heavily criticized in his ministry. Because he came and performed miracles that had never before been recorded. For instance, blind people receiving their sight. From Genesis up till the time Jesus came, there was never a time recorded in scripture that a blind man was healed. At best, you will find in the story of Elijah or Elisha, the miracle of a dead boy who was raised back to life or the miracle of multiplication. So miracles and healings were not commonplace. And that is the reason why every time God is introducing a new move, it takes time for the larger multitude. It takes time for, for the crowd. It takes time for that generation to believe what God is doing and to subscribe to what God is doing. Because most times, God will come and move in a way that seems to surpass the understanding of human beings. If you are with me, say amen. amen. You know the Bible says in Isaiah 55 that my ways are not your ways. God speaking. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. He said, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways. That means that the ways of God, as scripture says, are past finding out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I just saw something like fire come on two people right now in the congregation. That's the reason why I stopped. And I don't know who is in need of that impartation, but right now I stretch my right hand. In the name of Jesus, let that fire rest upon you now. Let that fire rest upon you now. You will never be the same again. You will never be the same again. Be baptized in the spirit and in fire.
please give me your attention just allow God to do what he's going okay there's a prophetic grace coming on two people two people one of you is to my left one of you is to my left one of i just saw it like a crown coming on your head it's a prophetic anointing a strange dimension take it now in the name of jesus a strange unction of the prophetic you will prophesy so much that that proverb that said is soul amongst the prophet it will be said of you i release that grace right now in the name of jesus christ step into another level Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please just pay attention. Allow, allow the people under the anointing. Just pay attention. Focus on me. And so the Bible declares in John chapter 5 where we were reading. The Bible says that at a certain season an angel will come and trouble the waters. And when the waters were troubled, whoever steps in first will be healed of whatever infirmity. And like I rightly said, this was only an extension of the mercy of God. One of the reasons why I believe it was an extension of the mercy of God is because realize that these people were Jews. And the Jewish nation... Or the nation of Israel was the nation that God had a covenant with. And because of God's covenant with their forefathers, they were recipients of the mercy of God. The mercy of God is a divine intervention of God in the affairs of men. The mercy of God is attributed to the will of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 9 in verse 15 and 16, God himself speaking, he says, I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion on. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy on. He said, therefore it is written, that it is not of him that willeth, nor him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. And so I believe that God decided to extend his mercy to these ones because they were Jews. You never heard that it was recorded in another nation before this time in scripture. That God was merciful enough to release an angel at a season, at a time of the year, to go and cause a distortion in the natural so that the people of God, or so that the people in that environment can experience the touch of God. Psalms 103 from verse 8. I'm still talking about the mercy of God. Psalms 103 from verse 8 to verse 13. The Bible says the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. That means that when the Bible says God is plenty in mercy, that means that there are certain activities around the life of a man that is not as a result of his intellect, not as a result of his hard work, not as a result of the family he or she came from. Sometimes, there are certain happenings around our lives that are only a product of the mercy of God. The Bible says God is plenteous. So even when sometimes God's people come together and their hearts are not expectant for God to move, sometimes because of the largeness of the mercy of God allocated to them, God may still move in their midst. And there are a lot of believers that I've seen that over time, if you judge the happenings in their life, you'll be right to say that this was as a result of God's mercy. Not because the person prayed so much. Not because of the, the, the person's spiritual life. Not because of how fervent the person is in the house of God. Not because of any human uh, uh, um, yardstick of judgment whatsoever. But because... Of the mercy of God but the thing with the mercy of God is it happens only when he wills 
And there are a lot of us that have come for meetings like this again and again. And maybe because your heart is not properly aligned. Maybe because your heart is not properly opened to God. To receive from God. Maybe because of the stumbling block of doubt. Maybe because of the stumbling block of anxiety. Of worries. Sometimes we can become so beclouded with our situations. We worry so much that our hearts are not open enough for God to bless us or to reach us. And so if you check that this has been the state of the individual, you will discover that most of the times, if God has moved in that person's life, it was only an extension of the mercy of God. Many of us are like that, sadly speaking. All that we have experienced so far has been the mercy of God. And not even just mercy that is stretched for towards you personally but i'm talking about mercy allocated to god's people that generally when we congregate together because of god's mercy for his people god can reach out to touch that individual but the bible says there came a day that the lord jesus walked into that place and the bible says that jesus noticed there was a man who had been there for 38 years with a particular infirmity if you are conversant with scripture that is the longest infirmity that was recorded in scripture never was it recorded that anybody had an infirmity or had a problem that stayed up to 38 years according to bible scholars and bible historians it's not very it's not so verified but it was also recorded that the woman the Shunammite woman whom Elisha prophesied over and she conceived and bore a son. It was recorded by Bible historians that she waited 38 years. But that is not recorded in the Bible. This is the man's condition that we have so far. So prior to this time, no one had ever stayed under infirmity, under captivity. Think of it for 38 years. That person probably has gotten used to the, that lifestyle. That person probably has gotten used to the limitation. There is a way you can stay under a particular limitation. There is a way you can live with a particular sickness or an infirmity or a problem. You can live so long with it that you become used to it. That it is not even in your imagination that there is a way out of it. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm stretching my hands to you tonight. Before God begins to move amongst us today, that anyone that has been long in an affliction or in a condition, I don't care how long it has been, but today I declare that you are coming out of it. I said I declare that you are coming out of that captivity. I declare that you are coming out of that captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Unlike that man, you have to believe it. Jesus walked to that man and Jesus asked him, Do you want to be made well? My question is, the staring of the pool by the angel and the coming of Jesus, which one is more preferred? When the Lord sends an angel to trouble the pool and when the Lord himself shows up. And that's a problem many believers have. That when you gather like this in a meeting like this, where God comes himself to address the conditions in your life or in your family, it happens to be that you are not prepared. Your heart is not open. Maybe because you have gotten used to the infirmity or you have gotten used to a way of deliverance that God will bring. No. No. The Bible says that it is nothing with God both to win with many and to conquer with a few. Distance is not a barrier with Him. Number is not, does not determine the extent of His move. The Bible says, for with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. My question is, do you believe when the Bible says that? These days we have a lot of believers who claim to be believers, but don't believe in the extent and the excellency of the power of God. To think that there is any situation in your life that can escape or that can overpower God's power at work in your life is total unbelief that no matter how long you have remained in that condition or no matter how long you have been desperate for god to move you have to believe that god is able to do exceeding abundantly 
far above scripture says all that we can ask or think the bible says jesus walked up to this man and jesus asked him do you want to be made well what was his reply he said i do not have anyone he was still used to the former way with which god moved thank god for all that he has done in the previous miracle service but the thing that you will attach yourself to how he has moved in the past and think that god is limited if he doesn't move that way is total unbelief god can break any protocol whatsoever and invade your space god can even go beyond this hall and reach out to that one who is following from his house god can reach out to that individual or that family that is following from miles away there is no situation that can limit or determine the move of god jesus asked him a question and god is asking someone a question tonight do you want to be made well do you want to be free from that oppression do you want to come out of that captivity do you believe that an end has come to poverty and lack in your family do you believe that this limitation that seems to be placed over your life you have prayed you have fasted you have done everything that you know to do you have consulted with every grace whatsoever and nothing can nothing seems to be done about this situation do you believe that God can break through on your behalf tonight and bring you out of it. You know the Bible says when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. Because they did not believe. He said we were like them that dreamed. Imagine that testimony. Exactly 14 days after. Maybe some people calculated. There were other people who came out too. And when it was mentioned 3 days, 14 days. They say ah, how is it going to happen? <laughs> You need to understand the power of God's word when it is sent. The word of God may not be powerful when it is with him. But when the word of God has come out of his mouth. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. He said, it shall not return void. If God has not spoken, then you, you stand a chance to doubt. Or you stand a chance to disbelieve what must be proposed ahead of you but if god has spoken the bible says faithful is he who has called you for he shall do it up till tomorrow there is no man on earth who has the right or the effrontery to call himself faithful except god himself he says i am the lord i change not when the bible calls him a faithful god it is because he is able to bring to pass what he has said he does not need natural circumstances to cooperate with him. It is his word that was spoken that commanded light out of darkness. How do you call light out of darkness? That's the word of God, brothers and sisters. And if he can command light to come out of darkness, then today he is about to cause light to shine in every dark place in your life. Your amen tells me you really don't believe all I've been saying. I've seen God personally move in ways that dumbfounds me. In fact, I have grown as a man of God to learn to believe God, even beyond the people that I speak to. There are moments that the Lord will ask me to make certain declarations, and when I finish, I go back and I'm asking God, how is it going to happen? But because of the precedence that our God has as a God that never fails, I have seen Him once and again bring to pass everything He has said. If God did not speak, then maybe, maybe, just maybe, you can doubt what has been said. But if God has spoken, it is in your interest to bring it to pass. Hear the testimony of that woman. In a dream, she saw the man of God talking to another person, giving instruction to another person. And she applied the instruction. It was not spoken to her. And the results came. In a dream. The earlier we begin to believe God for who He is, the better for us. Some of us are called into ministry. Some of God are called into great places in society. But maybe the reason why you have not seen the greatness of God's power at work in your life, well enough to give you a testimony of the God that you serve, maybe it's because of the extent of faith that you have in Him. How can you who profess Him as your God be the one who believes Him the least? how can jesus said to that man do you want to be made well 
And the man went into history. He said, I have no man to take me into the pool. But the word came again to him. He said, rise up, pick up your bed and walk. And the Bible says in verse 9 that immediately. How many of you are ready for an immediately kind of miracle tonight? How many of you believe in the God that is able to do or perform instant wonders? I'm not talking about a miracle that you will see tomorrow or next week. I'm talking about it happening right now. As it was spoken in the name of Jesus Christ. To everyone that believes, I declare instant wonders will be seen in your life tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. He's called the God of wonders. He's the God of suddenly. He's the God of instantly. He's the God of immediately. Right there before your eyes. And he can turn the story of a family around. Right there before your eyes. Psalms 107 verse 20. The Bible says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So the method tonight is by the sent word. He sent his word. It means that he spoke into their lives. He means that he made declarations by his mighty power into their circumstances. It also means that he sent his servant to declare over them. You know, outside of the word of God, there is no other instrument that God has to perform change and to bring about creation in your life. Do you believe that? There is no other way. He created the earth. How? By his word. He sent his word and it healed them and delivered them all you need to do is cooperate with the word that is sent that means that first of all you must believe that tonight if there is anybody that will receive a word from god it is you that means that you must believe that tonight it is directly to your life that this word is coming forth that means that your heart must be open to receive any and every word that comes knowing that god is speaking over your case and over your situation he sent his word there is nothing as powerful as the spoken word. Remember the story of Naaman, the commander of the army of Syria. The Bible says when he was told about Elisha, he was sent to see Elisha. When he got to where Elisha was staying, expecting that Elisha would come out and perform a drama. You know, sometimes we get so used to the spectacular, just like that man at the pool. When Jesus asked him, do you want to be well? He said, I have no one. To put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. Sometimes we get too used to the spectacular. If God must move, a wind must pass like this. If God must move, move a tree must be uprooted and turned upside down. Then you know it's God. Somebody is praying and say, God, if she's the one for me, if she's my wife, let my shoe come out from the wardrobe and stay in front of the door. You will wait there till tomorrow. The Bible says that the word of God has been tested and tried seven times. You don't need to test him. Actually, there is only one time the Bible says, prove me now. And it is said to prove him by asking whether he can do it. He said, prove me or test me by your obedience. In other words, when God sees a life of total obedience, if God speaks and says, go, and you go in obedience to his word, God says that's when you have what we call double dare. Is that true? He says that's when you push him to act as he has said. All that was said to Naaman was Elisha told his servant, he said, tell him to go to the river Jordan and dip himself seven times and he will be made whole. Naaman said, I thought he would come and wave his hand over me. Just like somebody who may be seated now and say, Maybe you prayed from your house and say, God, if it is you that is moving in this place, let the man of God come and touch me. Well, you know, that can happen. 
But I would prefer that you shift your expectation from that benchmark and just place it on the word of God that is released. God is too powerful to prove himself. He's too powerful. The Bible calls him, from, the Bible says in Psalms 90, say from everlasting to everlasting. In other words, from before the worlds existed, even till eternity, you remain God. Thank God that Naaman obeyed that word. And the Bible says, at the seventh time when he came out, his body was made whole. For some of you, the word may not even come from here tonight. It may not come from this platform. It may be that as I am speaking right now and declaring, the Spirit of God will begin to speak to you and give you instructions. And it is as you act on that instructions that you will see God turn your life around. When will our captivity end as a family? When will this poverty that has plagued us so much come to an end? Everybody in our family seems to be limited in the area of marriage. We have prayed, we have fasted, we have done everything that should be done. Is there anything else that needs to be done that has not been done? When will this situation come to an end? It will come to an end when your word comes to you. All that is needed is the spoken word, the sent word. And all that you need to do is believe in that word that has been spoken. Believe in the servant that God has sent. They asked Jesus in John chapter 6, what shall we do to do the works of God? He said, this is the work of God, that you believe in him who was sent. Why? Because John chapter 3 says, he that he sent speaks the word of god and god gives him his spirit without measure in other words for god to prove that a man has spoken under his authority god backs that word with the manifestation of his spirit he say he that god has sent speaks the word of god that's john chapter 3 verse 34 i believe go there let's see it before we pray john chapter 3 34 for he whom god has sent speaketh the words of god for god giveth not the spirit by measure unto him in other words when god sends a man to your life when god sends a man to your family the backing that that man receives to speak god's word that will bring a turn around and a change is that there is an immeasurable release of his spirit an immeasurable release of the spirit of god means that there is no extent to gauging how much power is released to that word in other words let the devil bring his best the power of god will definitely overshadow and surpass whatever that problem is for he whom god has sent speaks the word of god tonight some of you what you came to receive is an anointing on your life that will transform you to become god sent word to society that will transform you to become god sent word to your family that all that you will live here tonight is a word from God for your family. And at the instance of that word, there is a total change and a revolution that is brought about by the Holy Ghost. Do you believe that? All my life, the one instrument that God has used to bring about change, to bring victory, to bring my transition from one level to another has always been by His word. And so I believe the word of God so powerful that even if it is spoken to me from miles away, that is all I need. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. From their destructions. The word destructions there, if you read other translation, it puts death, it puts grave, it puts the pit. But generally speaking, destructions will mean the end point of any situation that is orchestrated in the life of a man by the devil. The Bible says in John chapter 10 verse 10, that the thief cometh not but to steal to kill and to destroy 
that the end of everything that Satan wants to do in your life, Satan is an architect. He has a plan for everything he does in the life of a man. The plan, the end point, the end product is total destruction and annihilation. In other words, cause to stop to exist that individual. That is the reason why even sickness or affliction is prolonged death. It's death. It's just that you are dying slowly. I saw the disease of a man this morning online. A very rare disease. You, there are some kind of infirmities. You just you wonder where they come from. A condition with his muscles. He can't move. He's just a vegetable. And the condition is that his muscles will continually be weak. That means for every day that passes, his muscles will become weaker and weaker. Somebody said destruction. That's the end point of what the devil wants to do. That is what he has in mind. That if not for this miracle service and for God's divine intervention in your life, whatever it is you are going through now that looks small, the end is to bring about a destruction. Probably the destruction of a life or the destruction of a family. And every destruction you see is caused by a demon spirit. I quoted John chapter 10 verse 10 for you. The Bible says the thief cometh not but to steal, kill and destroy. First Peter 5 verse 8 it says be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary the devil goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom to devour, whom to destroy, whom to wreck in pieces. There is a reason for this unprecedented form of lack around your life there is a reason for these attacks here and there around your life today you sleep you see an attack in a dream you wake up the next day with a pain around one side of your body next week you have another attack and another pain here why all of this cluster of attacks the end is destruction satan will never want to leave any stone unturned until he's done just the same way God will not leave you until he's true with what he has decided to do in your life. And when God is done with the life of a man, all that you will see is perfection, beauty, and glory. When the devil is done with the life of a man, all you see is total destruction. These destructions are caused by spirits. Let me talk about demon spirits before we pray. The Bible does not hide from us the operation of evil spirits. Sometimes the Bible will call them evil spirits. Sometimes the Bible calls them unclean spirits. Sometimes they are called demons. But by and large you know that he's talking about disembodied spirits that are mercenaries of the kingdom of darkness. When the devil lost his place in heaven and fell he had one goal and that goal is to wreak total destruction to any and everything that god has created including god's choicest creation which is man brothers and sisters i don't want to get you scared tonight but satan is real demons are real there are spirits the Bible gives them different names. There are different kinds. You know, Jesus said there are, he said, this kind goeth not. In other words, there are different species. Let me use that word so that we can understand biologically. That there are different species of demons. There are different kinds. They are not all the same. And as a result, their functionality in the kingdom of darkness are different. For instance, the Bible mentions some of them as thoughts. There are spirits of infirmities. Their goal or what they do is to cause diseases in the bodies of people. How come there is a disease in the body of a person that cannot be cured? Or that defies every medical solution whatsoever? At least medical science has done their best to explore every means whatsoever by which the body can recover itself. In fact, the way God constructed the human body is such that without or in the absence of any disease-causing organism, 
the body can naturally recover itself or the body should naturally regenerate cells in the body should naturally regenerate but how come somebody is sick of an infirmity and all that has been done for that person to survive and yet that person keeps going from bad to worse and sometimes if you bear witness to this for some of you have experienced it after that family has spent all their money all their savings and they are broke the person dies so my question is what was to what end was that sickness was the sickness just an attack on that individual or was it a general attack on the family have you seen conditions in families or in people where the moment they finish spending everything they have the person recovers without any medical intervention have you seen that before they visit all kinds of hospitals to no avail and when they have spent everything and they can't pay hospital bills again they send them at home and the person just recovers and now the person is recovered but they are in debt and you tell me there's no spirit behind that there are spirits of infirmity in fact in luke chapter 18 13 rather the bible spoke about a woman in the synagogue the synagogue was the house of god in those days the bible says she was in the synagogue supposedly where the presence of god should be and the bible says she was bound by a spirit of infirmity for 18 years that means the shape she took was the shape of that spirit there are different kinds of spirit there are even spirits that are called lunatic spirit in luke chapter 9 that was the spirit in that young boy who's who, who jesus disciples could not cast out the bible says that the spirit will make him fall to the ground fall to where there is fire and where there, why is it where there is fire or water if not to destroy that boy some of you need to be aggressive tonight that sickness that has been in your body for god knows how long it has to live and it must live tonight there are unclean spirits that's another kind of spirit remember the spirits that jesus casted out of that man and they told jesus they say if you will send us anywhere send us to the swines why swines the reason is because spirits are you following what i'm telling you tonight because we are going to stand up and and today we'll say enough is enough to any operation of devils in our lives are you here why swines that is because for you to understand the operation of a spirit check the character of the host when i say host i'm talking about the body that that spirit has inhabited swines were unclean animals to the jews and jesus was facing this situation in a territory that was outside the nation of israel so these were unclean spirits there are several kinds of spirit do you know that even lack and poverty has a spirit behind it there are people that have done everything that they know to do i know people i've had the privilege of praying for people who are hard working who are business inclined people who have done everything that should be done by a man to ensure that they make progress and prosper financially but the more they do all that the more they plunge into debt and you tell me there's no spirit of poverty you tell me there's no spirit behind lack perpetual lack is caused by a spirit perpetual lack in fact there are spirits that are specialized with stealing people's finances i've shared the testimony before how that i was counseling people at the one counseling session like that and a lady walked in and as soon as she walked in the lord opened my eyes in the spirit and i saw a creature like a monkey on her shoulder and this creature was not walking the creature was hanging on her shoulder because her bag was on her left shoulder and the creature was hanging on it and when the lord opened my eyes i discovered that that spirit was devouring her finance what was the situation every time she earns money or she earns her salary she doesn't know what she does with it until it finishes you tell me there's no spirit behind that there is a spirit behind why churches don't grow are you hearing me i'm not talking about i know here and there you know it takes there is also a place of human effort for you to see growth in any church or in any organization 
But if frankly speaking they have done everything that should be done and the church seems not to grow, there is a spirit at work there. The earlier you know that, the better for you. There are all kinds of demon spirit. The Bible calls them devils. In plural. That's what it puts there. Spirits over families. Some of those spirits, they just stand as a cloud of darkness over the family. And you discover that nobody rises in that family. There are families where nobody does anything that is up to territorial or national recognition. Anybody that tries to do anything, something brings them down. And finally, this young lady, she has been chosen to represent her school. Maybe for a quiz or a debate competition. And she is to travel out of the country. And then few days to the day they will travel. She comes down with a sickness that cannot be, that cannot be diagnosed. I told you the story of a young man. Whom because of a curse that was on him. Every time he tried to apply to go abroad. Every time he was on his way to travel abroad. Something bad will happen. The first time he tried on his way to the airport. He had an accident and broke his leg. He had to come back and stay for six months. When he was completely healed. He was going to the airport again. As soon as he got to the aeroplane. They had entered just to close the door. Epilepsy from nowhere. He fell down. They had to bring him down. You say that is normal. The third time he tried it, he entered the country. As soon as he got there, immigration held him and deported him back. You know, when we commonize, that's the problem of carnality. The devil tricks a lot of people and makes them so carnal and sensual in their thinking and approach to life. And so you commonize every problem. You will know that they commonize problems by their approach to solving it. If your first approach to a problem is not spiritual, it means that the devil has tricked you into a life of carnality. So you think that everything happening around you is naturally caused. No, sir. No, ma. There are spirits behind them. Spirits that are highly intellectual. They are so intelligent. In cause, they can so cause problems around you. They can join heads in a family and people are fighting themselves. Not knowing that there is a witch somewhere there. Some of you are here because this is the night where it has to come to an end. I tell you, in my little life, I've seen all kinds, I've seen so much that I realized that if we don't have men in these last days that carry the genuine power of God, I wonder if Jesus will have people to come and rapture when he's coming. I'm telling you. Haven't you seen a family? They carry their investment and decide to buy something, maybe a car or something, that will possibly help them, you know, make returns, maybe for by doing taxi or whatever it is, so that it can bring returns to the family. And as soon as they buy that car, it's from one mechanic to another. Until they spend all the savings and start borrowing. Once you find a problem around your life that pushes you into debt, that's when your eyes should be open to know that there is a spirit behind this. I remember one time my elder brother was to have an interview. Years ago, many years ago, in NTA. That was a breakthrough. We had not heard before that anybody in my clan or my family had that kind of recognition that would be on national television. You know that show they used to do AM Express that time in NTA. Ha! We danced about it and we were prepared. The interview was supposed to be by 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. or so. Early as 4 a.m., we were to leave the house and go there. And all of a sudden, our car entered a ditch in front of the house. And the car could not come out. We did everything possible. Everything. Eventually, the engine got knocked. Just like that. Okay, let's go to the road and get a taxi and go. There were no vehicles. That was the first time I sat down and analyzed the situation and I realized when it's time for you to rise to certain places, there are forces that will come against you. By 7 a.m., we're not even half the journey. 
Ah, we had to start praying in tongues, so we switched. Eventually, you left my father there, myself and my brother. We had to fly by. You can't imagine the distance. We must get there. And as God will have it by his mercy, we got there and he was interviewed there. You know what? That car was never used again. I'm talking about a car that was a, a new car that was given that same year. How about when somebody decides to use his money to buy a land? At least let me have... We, we, are, we come from a family where there are no assets. We don't have anything to fall back on. And then somebody somehow manages to buy a land. And for 10 years that land has been under dispute. There is a spirit contending with their inheritance. To every perpetual trouble around the life of a believer, there are spirits at work. But the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. It says, but the Lord delivers him from them all. So for you to break free and to break out, you must outsource the mystery of deliverance. You see this life we are living, if you don't understand the warfare dimension to life, you will be a victim many times, many times, many times. And the devil, before he allows you to get to know the secret of victory, will cause you to expire. Time will fail me to talk about many things. I have seen things in the life. There are some things you see in people's life is like a story. This is the literal signature of darkness over that life. Wife is okay. Husband is okay. No child. And you say there's no spirit at work. There are different kinds. But he sent his word and delivered them from their destruction. The good news tonight before we pray. Is that we have authority over these spirits. Otherwise, all that would have, I would have been proposing to you is only to compound doubts in you and to make you grow in fear and this, realize that there is nothing that can be done. The good news is that we have power over these spirits. For as many as received him, to them he gave power. The word power, there is the word authority, to become sons. In other words, he gave us the right to act in his stead. That though there are witches, though there are wizards, though there are diviners and enchanters, there are soothsayers, though there are principalities and powers and rulers, you know, they are always in plural when the Bible is mentioning them. That means they are not one. So you run from the one in Medugri and go to Abuja, you will see those ones there. Even in London, as fine and beautiful as that place is, there are spirits there. Satan knows it's not like God that can be everywhere at the same time. So he has a strong network of demonic forces on the air and on the land. But the good news is that we have authority. And that's why when Jesus died and was resurrected, what God did was God raised him above these forces the bible calls him the head over principalities and powers he didn't take them away no god recognizes their place but he made him the head over principalities you see that in colossians chapter 2 verse 9 that he is the head over principalities and powers so when jesus says these signs shall follow them that believe in me that in my name the word name there is not talking about just the name you know like we say maybe somebody will commonize the place of name and say nickname the word name there is not just talking about identity the word name there speaks of authority when he says in my name he's saying that under the auspices of my authority they will go forth and wreak havoc to these principalities and powers so these are spirits that seem to be older than us. These are spirits that have been in the family for 300 years, 200 years. They have power. But all of a sudden, a small man can come and dethrone them in one day. Why? Because he's going under the authority of Jesus Christ. The only thing is that there are two things involved for you to be able to use that name. Number one, you have to be called. 
And as a believer, the Bible says he has called us out of every tribe and every kindred and every tongue and every nation. We have been called out. That's the meaning of the word church. The word church means the called out ones. So because we have been called out and separated from the world, we have been called to him. We have been called. The Bible says that before the foundation of the world, he has adopted us as sons. So that is a right for every believer. But that alone is not enough. It is one thing to be called. It is another thing to be sent. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. Luke chapter 9 verse 1. The Bible says he called them to himself. And he gave them authority. It is in your being sent. That you activate that authority. That you have over demonic forces. That's why I quoted that scripture in John chapter 3 that says, He whom God has sent. There is something about being sent. When a man is sent, the name and the seal of that organization that sends him backs him up. So when God sends a man, heaven backs that man up. There is a seal of authority from heaven over that man. That's why it says, In my name. It didn't say that they must always say, In the name of Jesus. No. After all, Jesus did not call his name when he was casting out devils. Is that true? The Bible will say he casted out spirits with a word. And frankly speaking, you don't always need to call the name of Jesus to cast out the spirits. No. It starts from your being conscious of the government that you represent. That when your life has come under the government of heaven, this is the reason for submission to divine authority. This is the reason for consecration. This is the reason for holiness. Because this is how heaven marks a life that has been brought under the government of Jesus Christ. It is at that point, to the human being, he sees you as being weak. How can you bring yourself under the lordship of Jesus? That is only when Jesus speaks that you will move. If Jesus says stop, you stop. Why don't you live your life freely? But because of, because of this understanding, you decide to become disciplined. It is on the strength of this that you become very powerful. So the demons are not subject to you because of you. They are subject to you because of the authority that is above you. They told Jesus, they say, even the demons were subject to us in your name. And tonight at the mention of that name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. I have realized that spirits are not the only ones that have ears or human beings are not the only ones that have ears. Even situations have ears. If the dry bones of Ezekiel could hear and as he spoke, bones came together. Then every situation around your life has an ear to hear. But they will only hear the voice of the one that comes in the name and the authority of Jesus. For blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Tonight God has sent me that by reason of the spoken word that someone's life will, will experience a turnaround. That someone's life will experience a total change. That someone will be brought out of that captivity. That someone will experience divine help from God. Probably you have been in a pit in your, in your life. And God by reason of divine help is about to bring you out of that pit. The Bible says in Psalms 40 that he brought me forth out of a miry clay. And he set my feet upon the rock. The Bible calls him the lifter of men. He said, lifted the poor from the dust and the needy from the dunghill. Truly, God is a lifter. That's why you came tonight. It doesn't take God so long. In one day, 13 years of slavery turned around and Joseph was taken from the prison to the palace. It doesn't matter where you are. You know, if somebody is on his way, for instance, if somebody is on his way to this place, we're about to pray now. If somebody is on his way to this place now and the person misses his way, all you need to do is make contact with that person. The first question you ask the person is what? Where are you? And from where that person is, you can redirect that person to this place. Is that not so? Some of you came tonight maybe because where you are in life, you are lost. 
in trying to look for solutions you have found yourself in places that you have no idea of and you don't know how to come out this night help is coming your way that the word of god that is able to translocate and translate a man from where he is to where it ought to be that word is coming to your life to bring about a total shift and a total turn around in the name of jesus christ i shared this testimony last week i will share it again and we can pray maybe they are even following online a young man was coming for our last service our last miracle service he missed his way he went to the wrong address somehow he was able to call the public relations line and he filed his way to the church he came in late and when he heard me mention about prayer requests he had to collect paper from somebody close to him and he wrote down his request according to him he said he wrote down eight requests and one of the things he told god was he needed a twin submitted it we prayed and left a week or so a week or more after that his wife told him she had missed that period when they went to the hospital for tests much more later they confirmed she was carrying triplets this is a family that has had problems conceiving i know them the question is what happened between when the prayer request was submitted were prayed for and when the result came out the answer is the working of the power of god in partnership with the faith of that man he had enough faith to believe god for twins and you know i told you before that when god moves in your life a part of his signature that he was the one who moved is that he will exceed your expectation so if you came for a single ration god is able to give you a double measure if you came for a double measure god is able to give you tenfold if you came expecting tenfold god is able to give you a hundredfold because he's able to do much more abundantly above all we ask or think that god that moved in his life that god is available here tonight if you are ready to believe him you will see him work wonders in your life are you ready to pray this night this night as, as i as we begin to pray and minister i want to beg you forget about anything around you and let your heart be open including the ushers and everybody walking everywhere don't just allow the service to progress and allow others to receive and then you are left out some of you came to watch a wonderful service because you are used to miracle service having spectacular manifestation would you take your heart off that and allow this service to be your service you are here moving in this place i worship you i worship you you are here touching every life i worship you i worship you you are here rearranging destinies we worship you we worship you and so we call you we make a we miracle is the promise and light in the darkness my god you have to personalize that song we make a we make miracle work promise keep your light in the darkness my god that is who you are let's sing it one more time we make a say miracle is the promise key and light in the darkness my god that is who you are say that is who you are say that is who you are say that is who you are that is who you are say Oh God. 
that is who you are. You are the way that is. You mend the broken heart. You're the answer to it all. Jesus. You are the way of this. You mend the broken you're the answer to it all. We're about to pray now. Just listen. When the Bible calls him the way maker, it is not a mixture of words. He is truly a way maker. So much that if there is no more path to clear to make a way for you, he will make himself the way. He said, I am the way. Do you understand? That was what Jesus proved when he walked on water. When the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, Moses stretched his hand and the sea parted. They walked on dry land. When Elijah was to cross River Jordan, he smote the, the river with his mantle. And the waters parted here and there. And he walked on dry land. When it was time for Jesus, he was in a hurry to meet his disciples. Because they were almost dying. There was no way through. So he walked on the water. That means tonight, if the devil feels that there is no way through for you to break forth. And enter where you should be. God is ready to go above him. That's why there is a construction in civil engineering. They call flyover. You know the meaning of that? If there is no way through, you will fly above it. Do you understand that? The light in the darkness is the miracle walker. Listen to this story before we pray. I remember many years ago, Bishop, you, you, you will know this story. Years ago, even before we started ministry, we will just go to pray, then we are on campus hungry for God and all of that. And I remember those times when we go in the place of prayer, God will break up. There was not a time that anybody went and laid hands. Once we begin to pray, the power of God, the presence of God will break out in that place. And I remember one of those nights, while we were praying, I was seated on the chair praying. And the Holy Spirit told me that the chair you are sitting down now, the glory that is on your life, has materialized into that chair. I stood up from the chair and I walked to a lady as I was led. And I took her and put her to sit on that chair. Unknown to me, the lady had been diagnosed of breast cancer. A student. You remember that story? Now she sat on that chair. While she sat there, she was praying and telling God, the grace that is on his life, put it on me. While God was putting that grace, God was dissolving that cancer that was on her breast. The story had it that as she left that prayer meeting and went to the hostel, she didn't know that the lump had disappeared. She woke up the next day and discovered the lump had gone. She had, been, she had already been booked for surgery in about two weeks or so. She waited for one week to pass to be sure that the miracle had been done. And then she came to me one Thursday while we were about entering for evening service and broke the news to me. If you see the way I jumped that day, because prior to that time, I had not known that God could even heal cancer. And there was no prayer. Just sitting in that atmosphere of the glory. Tonight, I want to declare to you that right where you are standing, and those of you that are following online, that you are standing in the presence of the King of Kings. In case you don't know, there are holy angels all across this place. And in a moment of time, God is about to break forth and break through into the lives and destiny of people here present. And everything that has proven stubborn in your life will give way tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to pray now? I'm going to give you two minutes. I want you to cry to God. Whatever it is that is in your life that must be rolled away. That must come to an end. Probably you want the season that you are in to end. For a new season to come. I want you in the next two minutes. You remember the way Samuel's mother prayed. Hannah prayed. I want you to pray your life out. And insist that today, tonight, there must be a change. Lift your voice and open your mouth and begin to pray.
Have a pneumatic. You can do better than that. I want you to raise your voice and insist tonight. Let every obstacle, let every stronghold, let everything that seems to mock the name of the Lord in your life, let it fall like a pack of cards. That the King of Glory will arise on your behalf today, and that this night your story must change, just like Jacob, who met God at the place called Peniel, and his name was changed to Israel. He said, For as a prince, thou hast had power with God and with men, and thou hast prevailed. Can you insist for a change? Can you insist for a turn around? I can't hear you pray. I can't hear you pray. I can't hear you pray. He parada da la rabate la subarada da. Shake it, parada da la rada malas. My help has come. Oh, my help has come. Oh, your help has come. Oh. Somebody pray. Someone is praying. Insist like Anna. Insist like Jabez. Jabez called on the God of Israel. Oh, that thou will bless me and enlarge my coast. And God granted him what he requested. I want you to cry to him. I want you to cry on the, to the God of heaven. Let this captivity be rolled away. Let this affliction be over. In Jesus' 
Jesus name Psalms 34 verse 4 to 6 one more prayer and we'll begin to minister shortly Psalms 34 verse 4 to 6 he said I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears listen one of the things you must confront tonight are your fears do you know that there are situations and obstacles around obstacles around your life that you are afraid of and that fear has kept you perpetually in captivity do you believe that job said what i fear the most has come upon me some of you are here and what you are going through now is a product of what you were afraid of are you ready to pray this night they looked unto him and we enlightened and their faces what we are not ashamed verse 6 he said this poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles you are going to pray and stand in the gap for your family any form of trouble any form of affliction that is orchestrated by the kingdom of darkness i want you to cry to the god of heaven and said and say enough is enough tonight let there be liberty tonight let the reproach be over tonight let the god that answers by fire let him arise on your behalf bringing an end to every captivity bringing an end to every satanic onslaught in your family around your space open your mouth and cry to him he said this poor man cried unto god and the lord heard him and delivered him from all his troubles can you cry to him can you cry to the god of heaven we call upon 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 the god of jacob the god of isaac the god of abraham the covenant keeping god that every obstacle every yoke every satanic manipulation every attack of spirits around your family let it come to an end tonight let it give way tonight let it give way tonight let that yoke be broken let that yoke be broken in jesus name we are still praying proverbs chapter 3 i hope you are not tired of prayer proverbs chapter 3 verse 27 we are going to pray some more i want you to pray for a dimension of the miraculous that will manifest in your life like you have never seen before how many of you believe that he said withhold not good from them to whom it is due because you came here tonight everything that is good is due you everything that is good is due to come to pass in your life he said withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thy hand to do it next verse he said do not say to unto your neighbor go and come again and tomorrow i will give you when thou hast it by thee you are going to cry to god and say lord let there be a manifestation of a now miracle did you hear what i said now breakthrough now miracle you are going to cry to the god that is the covenant keeper keeping god i say oh lord 
Let every everything you are believing God for, let it manifest now. Let it manifest now, not tomorrow, not next week. Let it manifest now. Lift your voice and cry to Him. The miracle of healing. The miracle of breakthrough. The miracle of deliverance. The miracle of favor. Everything that is good, that is due you, every long standing expectation, I want you to pray like you have never prayed before. Oh God, now miracle, now breakthrough. The Bible declares Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Shakarabaga de la Gabaraga de Eparaga da se Kabara de Saleke Paragodo Leseke Paraga da E Parusia and the Rekade Sobora Ibraga da Gala Gala Gada Legere de Gos E Kabaraga da la Garaga de Gebero Godos Come on, sis. Let doors be open. Let doors be open. Let doors that have been closed be open. Let the gates of your destiny be open. Be open. Be open. She parada dala parada de, e poso koboro godosi, e ke poro godo borosi, parada bala da parada dala de borosi. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You're the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You're the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Believe that I. Oh, 
I tell you, doors are opening. I see doors opening. I see open doors. That's what I'm seeing. Open doors. Doors that have long been closed over destinies, over callings, over ministries, over families. I see them opening now. I see them opening. I will praise you from everlasting to I will praise you from everlasting Everlasting to everlasting From everlasting Everlasting to everlasting The presence of the Lord is here I see the angels of the Lord all over this place God is about to do a quick work for somebody tonight God is about to wipe your tears your season of weeping is over your season of weeping is over Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Shortly, I will begin to minister to us. And then after that, we will pray on the prayer request. And we will be done for tonight. The Bible says, Now the Lord is that Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Spirit of the Lord is here tonight. He's already touching people all across this place. The liberty there speaks of deliverance from every satanic form of oppression. Every embargo, 
every yoke every limitation that the enemy must have placed over any life the bible says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty that means god is able to lift you out of that pit he is able to bring you out of that stronghold he is able to break off the chains and the shackles of the enemy and release you into your god ordained destiny he is able to make today your day of deliverance and your day of freedom the liberty also speaks of access that where the spirit of god is lord we have access to the heavens we have access to the anointing access to the glory access to the presence and the power of jesus that access is capable of turning the situation of your family around that access is capable of bringing you into a place of greatness bringing you into a place of favor it is capable of like the psalmist says setting your feet on the rock when the bible says he has set my foot on the rock it means he has given you a firm foundation it means he has established you and when god establishes you the wind cannot take you out again that grace is available tonight for everyone for everyone that is in this place and i want to assure you tonight that by the time we say the last amen you will leave this place knowing that god truly has visited you right where you stand right where you are you are standing in for yourself you are standing in for your family members you are standing in for your loved ones you are standing in connection to everyone that is connected to you that tonight your experience with the power of god will determine their freedom will determine their deliverance for some of you what god wants to do tonight is wipe off shame forever from your life for some of you the glory of god is about to rest on you and take away that season of reproach that you have been in that's what god is about to do i want your heart to be truly open everyone across this place and those following online when god gathers his children it is because he has come to visit them it is because he has an appointment with them and the bible says those that go to mount zion they go from strength to strength those that appear before the lord in zion they go from strength to strength that jesus will show that he's alive by reason of the miraculous things that he will do in our lives are we ready tonight Spirit, I know you are here. You are here in your power. I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit. I know you are here. You are here in your presence. Truly I know you are here. Precious Holy Spirit. We know you are here. You are here in your power. We know you are here. Precious Holy Spirit Right where you are, there is no distance in the realm of the Spirit The power of God is available here Is available to save, to heal, to deliver To set free, to cause change To cause a turnaround to do mighty deeds, signs and wonders. 
the bible says in hebrews chapter 2 verse 4 that god also bearing witness through miracles signs and wonders and the gifts of the spirit god is going to manifest himself tonight hallelujah now just i want you for just three minutes i want everybody to be still in this hall just stand in the stillness of this atmosphere while the keyboard is playing this is how god will start tonight there will be deliverance you see i was just waiting for the instruction god will give me and he has spoken now now in the next three minutes god is about to do a kind of deliverance here i saw while we were praying i saw people who were walking as though they were crawling no just with your strings like that they were walking as though with their, they were crawling and i saw things that were like weight on people because of these weights they could not stand upright they were bent and it was like they were crawling so they were not moving fast and they were not standing upright and the lord said it is time to take away the weights and the burdens please lift your hands everywhere just be still i'm just going to declare all right and then the power of god will begin to walk in the next three minutes there will be massive deliverances here tonight father please bear witness to your word by an eruption of signs and wonders i thank you for the angels that are standing by my left and by my right and that are ready to walk and right now in the name of jesus by the unction of the spirit of god i come against those yokes those burdens i come against those weights that are on people anyone that the enemy has placed a weight on a burden on any family represented here in the name of jesus i command those weights be lifted be lifted be lifted be lifted be lifted that's it that's it that's it he's lifting those weights by a mighty anointing of the spirit is resting on people from the front to the back from the front to the back that's it yoke of oppression for many years yoke of delay burdens placed on people right now by the power of the anointing be lifted be lifted be lifted be lifted be lifted just be still god is touching people is a form of deliverance happening now i know you are here you are here in your power i know you are here precious holy spirit i know you are here the lord is telling me he's he's breaking off the yoke of witchcraft that's what i'm hearing he's breaking off the yoke of witchcraft and right now in the name of jesus i cast those altars of witchcraft anyone that has been plagued under the operation of witchcraft i cause those altars now i command every yoke of witchcraft to be broken now to be broken now you are here in your power i know you are here precious holy spirit i know you are here you are here in your power i know you are here precious holy spirit holy spirit thou art welcome in this place holy spirit 
Thou art welcome in this place Omnipotent Father Of mercy and grace Thou art welcome In this place I'm going to make a declaration now Ushers at this point Bring the people out That the power of God will come on At this point I want you to bring them out Because there's going to be massive deliverance now I'm going to make a declaration Because of what I'm seeing Please play I'm going to make a declaration now God is showing me something In fact The power of God will rest on a young man Mightily He will shout so loud I want you to bring that young man Because God is showing me an end to captivity this young man, I'm seeing the names of your family members written and placed on what looks like an altar. The names of your family members were written and placed around an altar. And that altar has been serviced over time. And because of that, there is a limitation that has held every member of your family. But right now, at the count of three, I'm saying to that young man now that the hand of God will come on. And to anyone that is that whose family is under any form of captivity orchestrated by altars, right now in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, by a mighty move of the Spirit, I command those altars to catch fire now. I command those altars to catch fire now. I command those altars to catch fire now. Now in the name of Jesus Christ. Just bring them out. The power of God is going to rest. There's a young man I'm seeing that the hand of God is going to come on, particularly. God is saying that altar, that ancestral altar, is breaking into pieces this night. Just bring them out. At the count of three, at the count of three, the power of God moves from the front to the back, from the left to the right. And in the name of Jesus, let today be the day of emancipation. Let today be the day of freedom. Let those altars be destroyed in pieces. At the count of three. One. Two. Three. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Let those altars be destroyed now. Be broken into pieces now. Be broken into pieces. In the name of Jesus Christ. I arrest those demonic priesthood and I declare an end has come. Let those satanic embargoes be destroyed now. Let freedom come to those families now. Freedom to those families now. I declare again freedom to those families now. God is walking. 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 I feel the angel of the Lord moving in the congregation right now. Play. Come on. Play. God is walking. Massive deliverances. Just bring them out. Just bring them out. Everything that you swallowed in your dream any form of affliction any satanic arrow that was projected to you in the dream right now i uproot it i uproot it by the ministry by fire by the ministry of fire i uproot it i uproot it i uproot it i uproot it now that's it that's it that's it There's somebody I've seen like you are coughing. I've seen somebody coughing now. There's a satanic deposit in your system. I command it to come out now. Just look for that person. I've seen that person. The power of God is so strong. And I've seen the person like coughing. Every satanic deposit in your system, I declare by the ministry of fire, it comes out now in the name of Jesus Christ. It comes out now in the name of Jesus. 
it comes out now in the name of Jesus. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The saints and the angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy. There's somebody I'm seeing the hand of God will rest upon you now. You will feel fire on your head. Literal fire, like you can't control it. Now what I'm seeing is that God is setting you free from the demon of depression. Depression has been around your life. There's, there's an oppression I'm seeing around your mind. And right now God is saying that captivity is over. And he's setting you free. And I've seen it happen by the ministry of fire. You will feel heat on your head. Heat so much fire like you can't stand it father i stretch my right hand in the name of jesus i declare to those ones be delivered now be delivered now by the ministry of fire be delivered now in the yes does it be delivered now in the name of jesus christ Lord, we give you praise tonight. Can I pray some more? There's a particular kind of deliverance that I see God is about to do now. The Bible says in James 2.26 that as the body without the spirit is dead. Every time a spirit, a demon spirit is separated. That's the ministry of deliverance. When a demon spirit is separated from an individual, from a family, from a business, whatever it is. The Bible says the oppression of that demon spirit becomes as death. In other words, it, it stops, it ceases to exist. I'm about to pray now. Please everybody lift your hands and just close your eyes. Father, I ask that you confirm by the ministry of fire in this place. My God, I'm seeing that fire already. Massively. I'm seeing it like rings. I'm seeing it moving in cycles. In the name of Jesus Christ, anyone that is under any form of captivity, anyone that is attached to any spirit that is not of God you see them in your dreams they visit you in dreams in visions even broad daylight any kind of affinity or affiliation with demon spirits with unclean spirits right now in the name of Jesus in fact that's what God is saying I will count to seven I want you to shout Jesus and those covenants will be broken now those affiliations will be destroyed and those people will be set free. Father, I place an anointing on this shout at the count of seven. Let those demonic and satanic covenants be broken. Let those satanic affiliations and affinities be destroyed. I separate you from those spirits by the ministry of fire and I speak to those devils whatever you have in their bodies and in their life Take all that you have and let them go now at the count of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and now seven. Shout Jesus. I break those covenants. I break those affiliations. I break those affinities. I cast those spirits. I command you to let them go. Let them go. Let them go. You have no right in their bodies. You have the right in their lives. I command you, let them go now in the name of Jesus. Let them go. Let them go. 
I come against spirit husbands, spirit wives, satanic covenants. Every spirit that comes to molest you in the night time, in your dreams, I curse them now. And I declare, Baroko Asakapaya, by the God of heaven, I command your spirits to go, 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 go by fire. Go, go, go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bring them out. Just bring them out. I stand by the superiority of the blood of the everlasting covenant. Every covenant around your family, around your life. I don't care how long it has been. I don't care how many generations before now. Right now I come by the sword of the spirit. And by the blood of the Lamb, I break those covenants. I break those covenants. And I declare it is over forever. It is over forever. I command those spirits to let you go now. Spirits of bloodline, spirits of ancestry, let them go now. In the name of Jesus. Look at the power of God here. <laughs> look at the power of God in this place. Look at this. Look at this. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. Allow God to do what He's doing. God is doing a work. Every evil deposit, I flush it out now. Mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah is your name. You're the mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah. The Lord is showing me a vision right now. I'm seeing somebody who is putting on glasses. And right now the power of God is coming on that person. The Lord is saying, He's breaking every limitation that has held everyone in your family from rising. I mean, notable feats, notable achievements, rising to great places in life. That there is a yoke of the enemy that has held everybody wherever they are in your family you are putting on glasses right now i release that anointing to you that in the name of jesus christ who died and rose from the dead i declare that god sets your family free now god sets you free right now in the name of jesus christ can we pray for the sick now is it okay to pray for the sick now please place your hands wherever you have a pain or wherever you have an affliction whatever the sickness or the affliction or the torment is place your hand there we are about to pray if you are trusting God for someone raise the phone up and then I will pray for them if you have a, any way they are connecting to this platform maybe you are raising their pictures or they are streaming online just any point of contact you can raise it up and if it's at a part of your body that is delicate or it's your blood just lift your right hand up i'm going to pray for you quickly now let me pray for these ones that are outside father i stand by the blood the blood of the everlasting covenant and in the name of jesus i speak to every of these ones outside for he who the son sets free is free indeed in the name of jesus i declare be delivered be delivered be delivered and I curse those spirits now. I command you out of their lives. Out of their lives now. Out in the name of Jesus. Out. Help that young man there. Be free. Be free. Be free. 
I break those family altars. I cause those bloodline covenants. I declare be free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can we pray for the sick now? Is it okay? Place your hand where the condition is. We are going to pray very quickly. God is going to touch you right now. There will be miracles. Instant miracles. God is showing me somebody here. Before I even begin to pray, I'm going to minister to that person. There is pains on one side of your body. And what God is showing me is like an arrow was fired to you. You've been experiencing perpetual pains on one side of your body. God is showing me it was an arrow of the enemy. Right now I see a mighty hand from heaven removing that arrow. Removing that arrow. Let everything that is not planted just help them. Help them. Everything that is not planted in your body by my father is uprooted right now. Alright, let's pray for the sick now. Father, thank you because you have lavishly given us this grace and commanded us by the name of your holy child Jesus to bring healing to everyone that is sick. Therefore, I stand by the authority of that name. And in the name of Jesus, we pray for everyone sick here tonight, any form of condition that has defied medical assistance, whether here or following online or connecting to this meeting, in the name of Jesus, I curse the spirit of affliction. I curse the spirit of infirmity. I curse the spirit of disease. And I command you, let God's people go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Blood conditions be healed. Neck conditions be healed every form of pain be healed right now every kind of lump or growth be healed now in the name of jesus christ headaches be healed now in the name of jesus every form of weakness in your body be healed now in the name of jesus christ i speak to your organs to your systems to your tissues and I declare the life of God comes into them right now. Everything that is not planted by God is uprooted now. I declare be healed now. Be healed in your bones. Be healed in your eyes. Deaf ears be open now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone who has difficulty standing or walking. Arise and walk now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shout a big amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now quickly please pass the bus bed, the baskets around and collect the prayer requests quickly. We have just five minutes. We are going to do this very quick. Pass the baskets around quickly. Quickly collect your prayer requests. You just pass it to the last person on the aisle. And then the ushers will collect it quickly we are going to pray on them and then we are going to close tonight Anna see Alleluia, Jehovah Mary O, the most beautiful, the most. Please collect the request quickly. Anna see Alleluia, Jehovah Mary O, oh Mary O, the most beautiful. Now please everybody while they are collecting the request I want everybody to stand up and begin to pray We are just praying for the request right now 
ask the Lord to visit every request that is represented in that basket. Can you in two minutes open your mouth and just begin to pray? Please collect the request quickly. The rest of us in the congregation, raise your voice and begin to pray. Lord, visit families. Unlock breakthroughs for destinies. Let there be miracles. Let there be a visitation of signs and wonders. Let the souls of loved ones be saved. Let there be divine intervention. I can't hear you. We are praying. Somebody is praying. Please pray. Please pray. Raise your voice and pray. Bring an end to reproach over families. Bring an end to captivity. Let there be answers. Speedy answers. Let there be restorations. Someone is praying right now. Baroka subaranda baheta baloko bronde skeprehete moko sudia. Ivala kapara katebo skoprodo zobroda bahasibra. Le kabranda shabara katebo roko subaraga dalabara. Please bring the request quickly. Japara kateko sibra handa bala kabrades. I kabala da baraka tele borokosia. Si para bahata ba. Somebody pray. Sixty more seconds. Somebody pray. Let there be answers. Let the God that answers by fire answer on their behalf. Let obstacles be rolled away. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray just 60 seconds. Somebody pray, somebody pray. 20 more seconds. Let the God that answers by fire answer. Let testimonies erupt. Let there be an outbreak of miracles. Let there be restorations. Let lost, lost loved ones be returned. Let lost, loved ones that have been lost in sin be saved in the name of Jesus. Paracaseca parogoto, e prago saprate fe parogoto sia para. Hallelujah. Please give me a loud amen as we pray on this request. This request represents all your needs. There is no time. We would have ministered in the prophetic and be able to call out every case as the Lord shows. But everything written here represents all your needs and everything you are believing God for. I want to just declare and prophesy over this. In this month of June, you will see miracles like you have never seen before. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we call upon the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the covenant keeping God. And we declare over this prayer request, O oh God, that you will answer by fire. That you will answer by fire. In the name of Jesus. Let there be an outbreak of miracles. An eruption of testimonies. Breakthroughs like never before. Let families experience a total turnaround. In the name of Jesus Christ.
by reason of the answers released over this request lord put a new song in the mouth of your people as you visit them visit their loved ones let every family member who is represented in this request experience divine visitation experience divine visitation in the name of jesus christ you will return back with your testimonies in jesus mighty name we pray now lift your hands let me speak over your life i want you to believe these words the lord showed me and confirmed to me this afternoon a release and a deployment of angels you there will be shocking miracles like never seen before this month i dare you to believe god lift your hands father i pray for everyone here anyone that has been tied in a particular place anyone whose life has experienced a, a full stop or delay at any spot in the name of jesus i give you acceleration let everything that has tied you down be broken and i declare by the hand of god experience speed experience speed in the name of jesus christ those of you that are trusting god for a job i declare by the wonder working power of yahweh that in the month of june may god show up for you may god show up as your helper in the name of jesus christ i'm still praying for you i pray for your finances everything that has brought dryness around your finances in the name of jesus that season comes to an end i cause every form of dryness over your life and i declare by jehovah el shaddai walk into strange form of abundance strange forms of abundance abundant supply is yours in the name of jesus christ let the mantle of favor rest upon your life this month of june let me give you the word that god gave me for this month of june the Lord spoke to me and said for the month of June, it is going to be your month of unexpected open doors. Oh yes. And right now under the unction of the Holy Ghost, I declare in this month of June, experience unexpected open doors. Unexpected open doors. Let the doors open on every side. In the name of Jesus Christ. every kind of relationship that you need in your life that like joseph will connect you from the prison to the palace will take you from where you are to where your destiny is meant to shine wherever they are i call for those relationships destiny relationships ministerial relationships covenant relationships by the favor of god i call it into your life now in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that has been believing God for one thing or another from the beginning of this year, for five months, you have not seen it come to pass. I declare by the Lord, God of heaven and earth, who created the earth in seven days, may all that you have been waiting for from January till now, deliver for you in the month of June may it deliver for you in the month of june experience accelerated breakthroughs in the month of june in the name of jesus christ i just saw an open door and god is asking me to declare there's somebody here you are going to experience an open door out of the nation an open door out of nigeria that's what i'm seeing let it happen in the name of jesus christ I place an anointing on your life today. I declare that you will become a sign and a wonder. May God perform miracles and wonders in your life this month that will make you a testimony and a testament of His power and His grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be.
in jesus mighty name we pray wave your hands and give the lord praise